What's up guys, Gary McCready from HVAC Know It All back with another video. So did you see that flame roll out? I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what happened, what caused it and how we're gonna fix it going forward. Guys, please like, subscribe, hit the bell to the channel for future videos coming your way. Okay, so we're out doing the maintenance here. We got two carrier units. These units are notorious for these panels falling off. There's always a million screw holes in these things. But anyway, what we found here was the gas is off and you can see that these sleepers here or supports I mean that's not done very well we have some unpainted gas pipe too but the gas is off and downstairs the thermostat is calling the tenant downstairs doesn't really understand or know why it's not heating so they never mentioned this to me so we're gonna look to see why this might be off what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the heat we're gonna check the heat exchanger and all that kind of stuff but there's no reports that I was given there's no red tag here so let's investigate so immediately we can count the flashes on there. It's hard to see because it's bright. There's five flashes. If we look at the, the flash indicator or the, uh, the legend here, five flashes indicates ignition lockout fault. So everything is making sense up to this point. Let's further investigate what's going on here. We're gonna make sure that we have a call for heating coming up here. So all we gotta do here for that is make sure that we have power to our the ground which we do. We're checking across R and W, which should be zero volts. And it is. And then W to ground, which has 24 volts. So we're calling and we have ignition lockout because the gas valve is off. Everything is making sense up to this point. This job I'm on right now on this video is a subcontracting job by another company. They are so busy, they don't have time to take care of some service calls and maintenances, so they're subbing me out to ease the pain a little bit. This is one of the, the reasons I went on my own because I saw this opportunity to do so, and I've been doing a lot of this, and it's kept me busy for the last six or seven months. Now, what I want to explain is to be organized in business means you have to have all the right tools. So I'm using Jobber as my CRM, right, for invoicing. Uh, I don't need to dispatch right now, but when I do in the future, dispatching, quoting, scheduling, all that kind of stuff, I'm using Jobber. If you guys are interested in going on your own, check out Jobber. There's a 14-day free trial, and there's also some savings in the link I'm going to provide in the summary of this video. Now, something that I might want to suggest correcting on this unit is to wire W1 and W2 independently instead of jumping them out. You can see that here. They've also done that with Y1 and Y2, which is not really the best way to do these things because you want the stages to kick on independently. And as you can see, we have extra conductors in the thermostat wire, so I'm not sure why that wasn't done. Anytime we have the gas off to a rooftop like this, we're going to want to check the heat exchanger to make sure it's okay. Now. Upon inspection, this heat exchanger looks fairly new. There's no corrosion, there's no real uh, rust damage whatsoever, and I can't see any cracks or holes in this thing, so I don't think the gas is off due to the heat X. The blower was running when we got up here, but everything inside the cabinet looks good. I mean, the belt's not in bad condition, the pulleys are not in bad condition, and our tension on the belt is actually pretty decent here, so. I don't think we have a problem with this blower section at all. Last but not least, before we fire or attempt to fire this thing up, the burner section, yeah, on these carrier units, you do see a lot of rust around the burners. And the cabinet could use a bit of a cleanup, but it's not anything major that I, I, I see that I need to rectify before I try to fire it. And the other thing is our induced draft motor here. It's not seized, it's spinning freely. So, so what we're gonna do is turn the gas on and try to fire this thing up and see how it runs. So we have a bit of a delayed ignition and rollout on this. See that there? Hard to say what that's from right now. Could be gas pressure, could be dirty burners. It could be a plugged up heat exchanger. It's hard to say right now. This requires a lot more inspection at this point. Our induced draft motor is drawing almost seven amps. And you can see, look, it's starting to roll out there. It's rated for 0 0.25. 0 0.24, 0 0.24 amps. So we're still calling. We're still calling and the induced draft motor has just shut down. That induced draft motor is drawing 0.25 amps. This one here is drawing way higher, almost three times higher and it's just shut off on internals 
and it's smoking hot. So there's our problem. We're not moving enough air with this induced draft motor and that's why we were having a rollout condition and delayed ignition. It has nothing to do with the gas pressure, but because our gas pressure is high and because our caps here are seized on, they're seized and stripped. So we can't even adjust it. So what we're gonna do here is recommend a new induced draft motor, new gas valve, pull the burners, clean them, and clean the flame sensors and sparkers as well. That is how we're gonna roll on this job. So it's good to come here and do like a, a full picture diagnosis because if we miss that, guess what? If we miss that venter motor or induced draft motor shutting down or not moving enough air or didn't check the amp draw on it, we would have missed this whole thing completely. So. That's the video guys, hope you learned something here, I sure did, happy HVACing.